There's a lot of types of movies that I don't like. Dramas, thrillers, action, sci-fi, scary horror movies, black and white movies, movies made before 1980, movies made after 1980, kids movies. I guess when it comes down to it, I don't really like movies. There's one kind that I tend to shy away more from others though, and that's foreign films. It's possibly because I don't speak my first language, English, very well, so why would I understand one in another language? Imagine my surprise though, when the best movie that I've seen in months is a foreign film. It's possibly the only kung fu, zombie, romantic, comedy, uh, slapstick, thriller, drama, movie in existence, I present to you, for your viewing pleasure, Shaolin vs. Evil Dead. Weird Flex. This movie is, first and foremost, utterly bizarre. It could be because I don't understand the mythology that this movie is based on, but I'd wager that's not it. I'm very lucky that this movie is dubbed, because if it wasn't, I would have even less of an idea what's going on. I figured that I'd better check IMDb in an attempt to figure out the complex and intriguing story in play, but the plot synopsis on there doesn't make any sense. Here it is, word for word. The plot thickens as the heroes, Pack and Hack, discover a horrible plan by the evil genius Dr. Magma as he makes the evil dead come to life and fight the Shaolin monks that have mastered the art of fighting. What? That is not what happens. I guess it's up to me to set the record straight. Let's get ready to witness the timeless battle of Shaolin vs. Evil Dead. Our movie starts with some nice looking credits that I can't read, but that's not different from any other movie's credits. Then we cut to some choreographed jumping, and someone reading a bangin' poem. The night is dark, the road is long. Come on, men and men, return to your home. Here we meet three-fifths of our main characters. According to IMDb, his character is named White Brother, but everyone in the movie calls him Master or Brother or sometimes Uncle. I'd call him Baldy, but I think he can beat me up. For simplicity's sake, we'll call him Monk. I'd like to comment on the way Monk is dressed. Look at that, he looks like a moron. Only an idiot would look like that. Monk and his students, who are named Sun and Fire, but I'm gonna call the big guy Joe because it's his name, and the small one Junior. The two boys stop to go pee, and Joe tells an interesting story about why he puts his leg up to pee. Let's listen. Hey, how come you always put your foot up when you pee, huh? Let me tell you a story. A long time ago, dogs used to piss standing up, just like us. But one day, a pole got struck by lightning, and it fell on the dog. Poor thing was never the same. I'm telling you, and since then? that day, dogs always hold up whatever they're pissing on, just like this. That's stupid. Why hold it up with your foot, not your hand? If you used your hand, what would you hold your with, idiot? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I have no idea if that's actually a story or if the writer of this made it up but the fact that it could be an actual myth makes it all the better. Unfortunately, a log is knocked over, and Monk has to use some sick log jumping skills on him and the zombies he's leading. Oh, yeah, he's a priest who's transporting zombies, if you hadn't noticed. Or maybe they aren't zombies. You'll see in a sec. Our heroes are hungry, so they happen to walk by a conveniently placed restaurant. Joe and Junior run ahead and order some delicious noodles. Monk walks in behind them, and I'm wondering where he parked the zombies. As he walks through the door, some maggots fall on his shoulder. I can tell he's about to give this place a one-star Yelp review. Which is a shame, because those noodles look delicious. Using some kung fu magic, he summons a window that lets him see that this restaurant is not what it seems. And forget what I said about those noodles. Uh, they look like they might be a little bit higher in protein than I usually like. The patrons of the restaurant step in to stop this crazy man and his two companions, but through some kung fu they buy themselves some space. Enough space for Junior to take a leak. Why? Just watch. Master, why did you tell him to take a I need virgin's pee. Sorry, that's all I got. This has got to be in my top 10, using pee to discover the hidden zombie, scenes of all time. Our heroes are backed into a corner, and now we realize that there is only one competent person in this squad, Monk. Joe tries, but he's useless, and Junior is actively endangering himself by running towards zombies. On the plus side, there is some excellent kung fu. Watch this. Look at those moves. I haven't seen moves like that since the last time someone took my lunch money. And now back to Junior, the human liability who manages to stumble his way into at least three dozen zombies, fall down some stairs, and get force-fed an egg. Oh yeah, uh, those are eggs they're using to trap the zombies? No, I don't know why. Now at this point I can hear you asking, Chris, 
Why do these zombies look like dead people, what with the rotting maggots, while the ones outside are jumping up and down and look like Confucian scholars? Well, my Eastern mythology is a little rusty, but if I'm remembering correctly, it's because the dead people outside are actually vampires. This makes sense, because vampires are the bourgeoisie of the undead, which allows them to dress nice, while zombies are the hard-working proletariat undead. Cornered, and with no other options, it seems our protagonists have cunged their last foo. But wait, what's this? Why, it's an edgy ninja and his female assistant, here to deus ex machina our heroes out of danger by exploding the zombies. That's pretty neat, actually. After pulling a move that would make the Flash jealous, we meet our villains, technically. The wiki says his name is Black Wizard, but that's even stupider than the other name, so we're gonna call him Edgy. Edgy and his student... Sailor Moon? ...have some beef with Monk. Something about, I don't like being peaceful and helping people, you got to leave the school instead of me, blah blah blah. Typical whiny complaints. You know, I feel like I've seen this setup before, I just can't think of where. I'm not a big fat panda. I'm THE big fat panda. The parties part ways, and after comparing privates to figure out why Monk wanted Junior's pee, they arrive at the prayer site. Here we see the ancient Shaolin tradition of burying eggs, praying over them, and the spirits turning into butterflies. You know, average reincarnation stuff. Around this point, a small zombie starts complaining about how he can't find a decent burial ground. Oh, you don't know how lucky you are. They're taking you home to be buried. But look at me, I'll never be buried. I was tricked by a bunch of evil spirits and dumped here like garbage. Millennial zombie problems, am I right? He tips over the zombies, knocking off their piece of paper. If you're curious, knocking that off makes the zombies go crazy. Why? I don't know, it's calming magic or something. Do I look like a Shaolin monk to you? Stop asking questions. After a quick fight scene where Joe almost gets Pillsbury Doughboy poked to death, they travel onward. The short zombie trails behind, and Junior negotiates a deal with him. At the next burial site, Edgy tosses the zombie towards Monk, and the two fight. Monk steals the soul from Edgy, but it looks like he's got some egg on his face. <laughs> eh? Eh? They leave, and we witness a burial scene, I guess? Why do the zombies need to backflip into the grave? Other than the fact that it's rad as heck, look at him go! Except for Junior, who seems to be coming up a little bit short. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. I feel sorry for that actor. After a good night's rest, we find out why Junior is magically impotent. He's possessed because he ate that egg from earlier. Well, that's not good. I'm surprised the ghost just doesn't take the natural way out, rather than try to beat himself out of the kid. Joe decides the best way to deal with possession is to eat a lot of food. I'm not surprised. Ghosts aren't high in fiber, and Junior's gonna need a lot of that to get him out. And your brother! I've been trying to get out of him all morning, but I can't do it! Well, stop banging him around like that! You're gonna kill him before you get out! Just get me out of here! At this point, I kid you not, the movie almost pivots into a romantic comedy. Joe has the hots for Sailor Moon and tries to get her attention, but he can't talk to her because he's a total loser. This leads to a couple hilarious slapstick scenes and some heartfelt stuff that I'm gonna skip over. <laughs> After the lovey-dovey stuff, Edgy decides it's time to take things up a notch, and steals that small zombie from earlier and turns him into Venom. Around this time, Monk and friends try to see the future, but it explodes. Here we see a scene of Edgy trying to con villagers into... I don't know, paying him money? This is after the villagers all yell about dead animals. It's kind of funny. Well, put it down, man. You don't want to touch that. Ugh. Hey, hey, come quick. Someone killed my sheep. Oh, my sheep. Something came in the night and killed all my sheep. I don't know what it was, but it put holes in their necks. It might be the plague. It's all blue and swollen. Envy beats up the zombies, and Monk and friends just kind of watch. It's also at this point, I should have been referring to our heroes as the monkeys. Fans of 60s music? You're welcome. Edgy visits the town graveyard, which is a cave with wooden plates with names on them, and is told he can't go into the super secret villagers only part of the graveyard. He doesn't like this, but decides to play along, and concocts a plan to rid the village of evil forever. This involves using magic to teach the kids kung fu, after taking everyone's valuables. And those kids are pretty good. Monk knows that something is up, and it turns out Edgy has turned the kids into mind-controlled zombies. In order to fight them, Monk uses... Uh, Paper Shaolin Monk Kids? When did this turn into a game of Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> I summon Shaolin Child in attack position. The kids fight, which is great. You don't get to see this a lot. And they explode when they get knocked down? 
This brings schoolyard fights to the next level. I would have died many times if the real world followed these rules. Fed up, Edgy decides to sneak into the graveyard and steal an orange rock from a dead guy, who comes back to life. But he doesn't look like either of the other kinds of undead we've seen thus far. I'm gonna choose to ignore this. He gets put back to sleep, and Edgy leaves with the rock. But that's strange, the cavern's leaking. Ah, I'm sure that won't matter. Meanwhile, Junior is off doing chores or whatever, when he seems to experience a little indigestion. No, wait, I'm sorry, a lot of indigestion. I wonder what could be wrong. I've heard of explosive indigestion, but this is ridiculous. Well, at least he's okay, but... Uh, wait, wait, what is that? Is that... Uh, did he... Uh, but that would... Oh, no. So apparently, Junior is now the proud papa of an egg ghost boy who's covered in what I hope to God is whipped cream or something. After trying to ditch him, then having a change of heart, Junior decides to take him home to Joe, who helps him try to hide him from Monk. Let's see how that goes. Move to the side. Uh, Move it. Uh, now put your hands up. Uh, Come on. Uh, oh. Stand there. About as well as I expected. While this is going on, we see that Water has absolutely ruined that nice paper, and the dead samurai is very angry about it. So much so that he decides to suit up so he can go find Edgy and steal back the stone. I don't remember exactly what the stone does. Uh, the movie tells you, but it's not important. There's another excellent fight, and I mean, they really went all out in this movie. It's so good. Edgy and Sailor Moon are no match for the undead warlord, so Sailor Moon goes to try and find Monk to help. She finds him, and it's time for the final battle. Brother versus brother, good versus evil, a fight for the ages. The movie's been building up to this. And it's okay for about one minute. Then, because everyone else was getting beat, Egg Boy leapt on Edgy, started to explode, and the movie ended. I cannot express exactly how confused and irritated I was upon realizing this was the end of the movie. What kind of ending is this? This is worse than Gunshot Fade to Black. It's the worst ending I've seen, with one exception. But for now... That ends the tale of Shaolin vs. Evil Dead. I really enjoyed watching this movie. It's zany, weird, action-packed, and there's just enough of a story to keep things interesting. It's kind of like a Mad Libs. You throw enough stuff together and something funny is bound to happen. Now, I was going to make this a two-part review, but I watched the second movie, and it was such a colossal waste of my time that unless you demand it, we're skipping it. I'm sorry, just nothing interesting happens in it. It's so boring. Comment below if you want me to suffer through having to review that movie, but otherwise, look it up on your own time. As for this movie, I've composed a haiku in its honor. Zombies use kung fu. This movie is really great. Watch it if you can. Thank you for watching, that's all for now, and remember, Weird Flicks watches what no one else will.